Hello, time travelers. Today's temporal journey brings us all the way back to March of 1987. For this year's March and Tosh, we're celebrating the return of the Mac. This Macintosh SE is stock from assembly, including the rather dubious PRAM battery that has claimed so many logic boards. But, other than some rather intense yellowing on the parts of the case that weren't covered by the dust cover, this machine is in great shape. Today we'll be disassembling it, giving it a thorough cleaning, retrobriting the case, upgrading the RAM, and repairing any damage we might find. It's important to always make sure that you have a soft, padded area to work on when disassembling these types of machines. So let's get it flipped on its face and get to stripping it down. While we're disassembling it, let's go over the specs. This Macintosh SE has the expected Motorola 6800 processor clocked at 8MHz. This unit came with dual 800K floppy drives and 1MB of RAM. Options included 2 megs of RAM and trading one of the floppy drives for either a 20 or 40 megabyte SCSI hard drive. The inside of this machine looks great. Other than an amount of dust that I would describe as minimal for the age, everything looks fantastic. Of course, we won't know the full story until we get the logic board removed. First, we have to disconnect the ribbon cables that connect the two floppy drives. Next, the cable that comes from the analog board and power supply. Finally, we remove the shield from the bottom of the case, revealing the logic board itself. The logic board simply slides into metal rails on either side of the case. So removing it is as simple as sliding the board towards the back of the case until the tabs on the right line up with the notches on the board, and then pulling it free. And thankfully this board looks like it's in great shape. I was worried we were going to find a leaking PRAM battery, which has been responsible for many a dead Mac. But luckily this one hasn't leaked at all even after decades of sitting idle. Next, let's get the rest of the Mac torn down so that we can get it ready for retrobriting. This machine has been sitting idle for quite some time, but it's always important to make sure to discharge the CRT before disassembly. I'm not an expert on the process, so I won't tell you how I did it, but there are lots of tutorials online by more experienced people than I. And with all the parts removed, it's time to give the body a thorough cleaning and remove as many of the blemishes as we can. I start off with alcohol, which usually takes care of the majority of the grime. For this machine, all it took was some good scrubbing and most of the dirt came right off. Then it was time to retrobrite. I start off by laying down some plastic wrap, making sure that the pieces overlap. Then I pour some developer cream onto each of the pieces and brush it out into a thin even coat over the entire surface. It's important to make sure that you get even coverage here, so this is definitely not a step that you want to speed through. Next, I wrap the pieces up in more plastic wrap, adding more to the back. I find that having a good seal between the pieces seems to lead to a faster, more uniform reaction. Then I move the pieces into my Retrobrite box, which is a large cardboard box lined with aluminum foil and then lit up with UV lights. Now the parts didn't quite fit, but I think that we should still have good exposure for the parts anyways. And here we are, 12 hours later, and it's time to see how we did. 
Immediately it's obvious that the lower case now matches the rest of it, and there's no sign of the yellowing from the beginning. So I brought them upstairs and gave them a thorough rinse in the shower before setting them aside to dry completely. While the case dries out, it's time to turn our attention back to the logic board. The first order of business is to deal with the dead PRAM battery. For the time being, since it's not essential to the operation on the computer, I'm just going to snip it off and run the machine without it. Next, I wanted to brush all the dust off the board to get it all nice and clean. And I'll also go ahead and remove the old RAM since we'll be replacing that as well. Now let's install the new memory. We're going from four 256 kilobyte sticks to four 1 meg sticks for a total of four megs of RAM. And that looks a lot better. The board looks practically new without that layer of dust on it. Then I decided to turn my attention to the floppy drives, and this is where I screwed up. If you're ever cleaning one of these styles of machines, don't do what I did. I started by removing the floppies from the chassis. Then I started to clean the heads with alcohol. And here, in an effort to get the best camera angle possible, I lifted the top head way too far. This overextended the spring that holds it in position, and I'll show you the result of that at the end of the video. From there, I did the regular cleaning and removing of dust, as well as re-oiling the shafts and moving parts in the drives. Then it was time to reassemble the machine. And here we see the result of the overextension. The machine fails to boot because the top head of the drive doesn't have enough spring tension to bring it down and read the disc. I wanted to include this mistake in the video so that, hopefully, it'll save somebody some heartache in the future. So that's where part one ends. I'm going to try my best to fix these drives, but I've ordered some spare parts in the meantime. So this will be the very first two-parter on print and play retrospectives. Big thanks to all my Patreon supporters who help keep videos like this one coming. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again soon.